Coach, we've talked with um, the players about mm -hmm. Ted sitting down with them uh, in, you know, nest in their stalls, and a little bit with Ken, you know, he used to be a general manager, but he was also a coach of the Red Wings. Did mm -hmm. he approach you on that basis, sit down in the office and chat you up about that? He was awesome. Um, yes, he did. Uh, it was awesome when he came in. Um, as, I, as I talked to his family today, uh, I've kind of a, a role model uh, for, for me uh, you know I'd like to uh, as I get older have, have similar impact on people's lives the way he did um, just being around him was was incredible to see the, the the type of shape he was in he was sharp as a tack and he'd give you opinions and uh, you know I tell a story I was getting ready for training camp I don't remember what year but we were at Joe Lewis and he walked in and said, Coach, you know, what are you doing? I said, Mr. Lindsay, we're just getting ready for training camp, planning the practices and all that, and getting our message ready. And he said, Coach, you just tell them if they go into the corner with another guy and they don't come out with a puck, they're a horseshit hockey player. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was awesome. Uh, it was true in 1950, and it's true today. And I actually, that was my first message to our team. And um, I just thought, boy, you know, it's, it's interesting. Uh, sometimes when... Uh, I, I, I use the word dignitary when people with, with Ted Stature uh, pass away. You're involved in it, but you don't really know him. I, I got I was lucky enough to get to, to know Mr. Lindsay. I, I, I attended his golf outings. I spoke at that uh, uh, at those. I saw the impact that, that he had on the autistic community. Um, just an awesome, awesome person, and, and my life certainly was enriched for having uh, spent time with him. How unique is that? When, when 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 greats in the game pass away, sometimes it's 20 years after we've seen them in the public eye, but. He had such a genuine relationship with, with generations of Red Wings. Uh, he was so he was so genuine. That's a great word. He was so genuine and, and unique. And um, you know, I think he really helped carry on that part of the Red Wing tradition, the, the that era of the Red Wing tradition. When when uh, you know he was around as much as he was around, and, and to see the respect he had from everybody, um, it, it just brought the, the those championships in the 50s to life, and, and uh, it just makes this organization that much more special. And, and having him around town and seeing the impact on people, uh, it, he was a special, special person. Today you had the players in line to go through. You, I think. Nick mentioned they talked about him in the room. Anything else behind the scenes that we might not have seen? Uh, no, no, not, nothing else. You know, I think um, it, with, with the exception of maybe just the guys that have just been here in the last year or two, uh, he still had real strong relationships with guys. You know, I think this is Lark's fourth year, and he had a really, really strong relationship with Lark's. Um, he's not one of those people that you have to tell his story everybody knew his story and you know I think sometimes uh, when, when these things happen and, and young people might not know the history of it boy everybody knew the history of, of Ted Lindsay and what he was about as a person because you got to see it firsthand I mean uh, he, he was so uh, right into his 90 sharp as attack and, and uh, that, that's what was real impressive you, you said he had opinions did you guys ever butt heads about no <laughs> no no he, you know what's funny actually is is I think everybody has a different perspective. Some guys like to uh, complain about uh, the coaches. Some guys like to complain about management. Uh, he wasn't afraid to, to really be hard on the players, you know, and, and, and he would hold the players. You know, I think he felt like players won and players lost, and he wasn't afraid to come in and, and say what he, what he thought that way. So it was an interesting perspective. You have to turn your focus to Tampa tomorrow. What, do you, what sets on your mind with today and going focus towards tomorrow? Well, I just uh, – yeah. What sets in my mind? One, I guess, uh, you know, we, we took a good step forward last night. We've got to make sure we take another good step forward. Uh, uh, they're, they're a real good hockey team. Obviously, their record's great. Now, I don't think the discrepancy in teams uh, in today's NHL uh, is, 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 uh, is outlandish. So, um, we've got to go there and play great hockey. And if we do that, we put ourselves in a position to win. Uh, certainly not. I'm sick of not beating them. Uh, uh, without, without a doubt, we want to go there and win the hockey game. Uh, um, so, hopefully, we can, uh, we can go out and play good hockey. How about probably Dylan? never remind you of that streak or anything, does it? Yeah, <laughs> you know, and he, I got another buddy there, uh, Derek Lalonde, that was coaching. Um, he's like the little yip on the side, and he <laughs> likes to yap lots, you know, like the little dog that yaps a lot. So uh, Coop doesn't have to do much talking, but, but, but uh, yeah, so he's got his, his sidekick there. And I don't know, I'm just, uh, uh, well, I'm kind of kidding. Uh, uh, but, but, hey, you know what, in the end, you, when you win lots, you can stick your chest out a little bit more, and, and uh, that's life. But but well, all we can do about it is go play great hockey and try to win a hockey game. 
Dylan out for this uh, weekend be reevaluated for Tuesday? Yeah, I'll be reevaluated. Uh, you know, I think for precautionary reasons, going to get a second opinion and, and, and make sure that there's nothing more to it. And, and I think it's going to be fine, but we'll, we'll know more on, I'll know more Tuesday where, where he's at. Is, is N going to still be up as an emergency? Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, whether it's emergency or, or a regular, I've got to talk with Ryan Martin and we've got to work through who's healthy and who's not. We've got a couple of guys that are, I would say, iffy, so let's just see where everything's at. But uh, if, if everybody's healthy, then N would change to an, a, a regular recall. Have you discussed it all, just shutting Larkin down for the season? Nope, uh, not had one ounce of discussion about that. But to be honest with you, I don't know that this will be a big, big deal. If it is a big deal, uh, you know, obviously we're not going to jeopardize Dylan's career. Um, so if it's something that was that, that was the case, we wouldn't do it. But I don't think that's going to be the case at all. I think it's just uh, really, I think he's, he's having a spasm issue, and I think it'll be fine. And, but, but uh, you know, when you, when you start taking pictures, you look at things, and you see things, you got to make sure everything's right. So um, I know Dylan wants to play. Dylan, um, we gotta, we got we to gotta keep moving forward as a hockey team, and, and Dylan's a big part of that, uh, regardless of where we're at the standings. And, and I know he wants to continue to be a big part of that. How's Zadina impressing you so far? Uh, he's gotten more dangerous as as he stayed here. You know, I think he's a pretty his depth in his game is pretty good for a young player. He, he stops on pucks, he blocks shots, he, he doesn't circle a ton. He's not perfect, but but he's he's ahead of the game that way than a lot of young players. Um, he, I just felt like when I've seen him both in the NHL and the American League, at times he hasn't been dangerous enough. And for a guy who's an offensive guy, and I thought. Uh, he took a huge step. Uh, certainly, I thought Arizona was better, but Colorado took a huge step. I thought he was very dangerous most of the night, and I thought last night he showed a lot of signs of being dangerous as well. So, you know, as I said to him, you're an offensive player. If I want uh, a guy that just, just plays great defense, we can go call somebody else up. You, you, you're here to create offense. That doesn't mean you play careless, but but you got to be dangerous, and, and he's been much more dangerous that way. So uh, showing, showing signs in the right direction. There is not a shadow of a doubt he's a better player today than he was uh, – in camp in September, and I think that's what's the most important. Do you think you have a possible find in Double A as a center? Or is it just way too early to say that? Uh, way too early. Uh, way too early. Uh, you know, he was really good last night. Uh, he was electric when he touched the puck. I think there's still lots of room in his game. Uh, it's easier as a winger um, to, to have lapses defensively than it is as a center. You know, the teams that win are the ones that are, for the most part, really good two-way centers. So, um, you know, as, as he as he continues to basically come back in the zone and stop, then, then uh, the, you know, he can be dangerous with, with a, a guy who can transport the puck from one end to the other. What I like about it is when he gets the puck, he does transport it. And, the, and Larks is the same way. And so you get out of your zone fast and you're able to play in the other team's zone. Um, it, it, there's pluses and minuses to both. Let's just keep watching and seeing how he does. With Zadina, you lose the maximum. Is it the nine, right? Yeah, our plan right now is to use the nine games, not go past the nine games. You won't but exceed it. We will not exceed the nine games. Okay. No, and there's no doubt he will. He will only play nine games. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. What's Zadina? I mean, would Cooch be a little bit of a comparable for him? Somebody to pattern his game a little bit? <laughs> well, I hope so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, you know, I think when when we drafted him, I was curious to see. There's lots of different types of wingers. There's guys that are what I would call just scoring wingers who, who need a center to constantly get them the puck to score. And then there's a, there's been a lot of influx of wingers like Patrick Kane, like Kucherov, like Johnny Gaudreau, who almost control the game like a center. They have the puck on their stick a bunch, and they control the game like a center. I don't know if he's to that uh, level of in terms of controlling the game and having the puck on the stick the whole time, but I'm hoping he's somewhere in between just a pure scoring wing and a guy who can control the game, make plays, and have the same kind of effect that a, that a real good center would have. Uh, Kucherov's hockey smarts are probably as good as anybody in the league. He, he really knows how to find areas. He's he's got unreal patience and poise. Um, if he co becomes anywhere near Kucherov, we'd have a heck of a player. After Zadina's nine games, <clears throat> do we see any other major call-ups this year? Um, no, I don't anticipate that. You know, I think at that point we'd be moving in. I think we'd have one. I think Ends call up's going to move to regular at some point here, so then we'd have one more call up, and and we would keep it and just just uh, for safety reasons, see where, where we're at, and we could always emergency if we have to. The problem that happens with emergency is it's got to be the right position that is injured. You know, and and so. Um, you know, for example, uh, Luke Witkowski is listed as a forward with us, so you know you could run into some issues. So we'd probably save that one. Jeff Madison Bowie seems to understand the opportunity he has here in Detroit. How have you liked his progression since he's arrived? Well, I think he's gotten better every game. Um, I think he's moved in the right direction. I think part of that's just familiarity with how we play. 
uh, get more comfortable. I think uh, uh, part of that's just confidence. Uh, you know, he hadn't played a ton, and now he's playing a little bit more. So um, I think he's taking steps in the right direction. As I told him, uh, uh, he's just got to, you know, he's got a number of games here um, to keep moving in the right direction and, and seeing uh, he's got to make sure he's real good with the puck and, he, and he's good defensively. If he does those two things, he'll find ways to earn minutes. That's his first step. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Chef. Appreciate it. Thank you.